Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Curcio, and this is Lisa Stamp Studio. I'm so glad that you've joined me. This is a YouTube live event, and today is Wednesday, August 12th, and the year is 2020. Now, some of what's behind me might look familiar, and some of it doesn't, because we are in a brand new home in a brand new studio, and I'm super excited to be with you live. Actually, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm a little fish out of water today, because everything is in a different place. And although I only stamped in here for the very first time last night, I was actually going, where did I put this? Where did I put that? If you've ever reorganized your craft area, I think you can relate to what I'm going through. Many of you have been asking me, we want to see your new studio, and that is coming. We are gonna do a full length video for you soon. We hope to have it up by the beginning of September. We have some furniture missing that's coming. I'll give you a quick pan to the room a little bit before I turn the camera down. But let's talk about tonight's project. I have a fantastic vellum wrap card for you. I have made this card from scratch, so the vellum wrap is super easy, and it holds a full-size card. Now, obviously, you can tweak that to a postcard size, which would be just a quarter sheet of cardstock, which allows you to use this for any type of occasion. Now, I've gone with a very whimsical theme for tonight, and I've got lots of tips to share with you, not only about constructing the card, but about the stamping techniques I'm gonna be using in today's project. In addition to that, keep in mind this card is gonna be fantastic for invitations, whether wedding or shower, or even parties that are coming up. Christmas is around the corner, and for those of you that love to paper craft, it's not too soon to start planning those projects as well. Now, as a reminder, I am going to put a link down in the video description below when tonight's live is all finished. There you'll be able to find the link to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for tonight's project. In addition to that, I want to give you a couple housekeeping items. First, I am going to have six extra cards using the exact same bundle of product that I'm using tonight for this card. So please hang with me to the end of the video so you get added inspiration. Secondly, I want to introduce you to Megan. You'll see Megan's name here in blue. She is my virtual assistant, and she is amazing. Megan's job is here to interact with you, to help answer questions and be able to direct you because quite frankly, while I'm stamping, it's impossible to keep up. And Megan does a great job of that. And finally, if you would like to chat during tonight's live or even after with the replay, you're gonna need to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That's a YouTube thing, not a Lisa thing. And I would love to see you chat along with us. I do come back and I read every single comment. All right, are you ready for that quick pan of the studio? The camera only goes so far, so you're not gonna get to see the whole thing. And like I said, a full length video is coming. All right, so bear with me because I'm gonna have to do this manually. This is very familiar to you, I know already, but here we go, I'm gonna turn a little bit this way and you can see that this room is much, 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 much larger than the old room. I can't go much further without making you really seasick and of course taking this off the tripod, but I promise you that a video is coming. All right, let's turn the camera down and let's get started on tonight's project. Here we go. Whether this is your first time joining me live or you're returning, I'm thrilled that you're here with me. Okay, this is a different countertop than what you're used to. This is granite. And I did some testing and I found that the granite is very, very reflective. Now I have a lot of lighting here for you. So I'm gonna be using a black grid mat underneath to help keep away from that reflection. But the very first step on tonight's card actually uses the Simply Scored. This scoreboard is fantastic. Not only does it have, of course, all the markings, but you might notice these little holes here at the top. It comes with three place markers. This is fantastic, especially with the holidays coming up when you're gonna probably make multiples of the same card because you can actually mark the score lines and then just add your cardstock and change it and over and over again, make those exact same marks. It makes it super quick and super easy. Now, in addition to that, it comes with a double-sided stylus tool. So one end is a little bit bigger, one end is a little bit smaller. I favor the larger end for designer series paper, and you're gonna see that this is vellum. And this end is smaller, which I like for cardstock, because obviously th cardstock is a little bit thicker. You're gonna experiment and just see what works best for you. We are gonna do two score lines, and the first one is gonna be at four and a quarter, and the other one is gonna be at eight and a half. Now, because I know there's a link with all the cutting dimensions, I know that you like to know, and I'm gonna try to do my best to give you all those while we're here. This is cut five and a half by nine, okay? So I've got this lined up here in the corner where it's gonna be nice and straight. And I'm taking that wider end 
and I'm gonna score. Now there's one thing about vellum, it's slippery. So take your time, go down the track, and you're not gonna wanna press too hard because when you fold this, you don't want this to crack and rip. And then I'm gonna move over here to the eight and a half and I am going to score one more time. You're gonna see I'm taking my time. It travels down the vellum very, very easily. All right, so that's gonna leave us this. Let me go ahead and put that uh, stylus tool back in here. I wanted to show you, it's got a little place for it, which I absolutely love. And I'm a little bit like a fish out of water because everything is set up way different here than it used to be at my old studio. So bear with me. I've got the vellum here that we just scored and let's go ahead now and let's go ahead and crease this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'd like to use my fingers first. I wanna make sure that I don't get too restless with the bone folder on this and then end up cracking my vellum. Because remember, this is a very delicate, opaque type of paper. And I love the way it looks when you're creating cards because it's very, very classy. Very common with wedding invitations as well. And this is a great idea for an invitation. I'm gonna use that bone folder to go over that crisp edge. And then here's that little half inch area. This we need, this is really important because this is where the adhesive is going to go. And I'm gonna, I, I wanna score it this way because it'll be easier for my hand. And then I'm just gonna turn it back this way once I do. Let's see. I'm trying to stay within your camera view. Like I said, everything here is new and in a different place. If you've ever rearranged a room or even a drawer, you can sympathize with what I'm going through right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just crease this up as well. Okay, so we're right there on our score lines. This is also a good time to kind of correct any mistakes you might have, because you can see I got a little one down here at the bottom. And let's just go over that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna seal this up. So I've got my silicone craft sheet here, and I absolutely love this because it allows me to keep my work surface sticky free. So adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to this. We've got our little um, tab here, which you can see I didn't do very, very straight. So give me a little forgiveness. I've got my stamp and seal plus. I love this because it comes out in small little tabs and I have much better luck just getting little pieces out at a time or a whole strip. This works really, really well for me. It is very, very strong. So if you're gonna put this down, please know that it's not gonna come up. So you're good to go with this. Anything that hangs off the edge, I can just very lightly just curl it up, which is one reason why I love that silicone craft sheet. All right, so I'm gonna take this now and I am actually gonna start here at the crease and I'm going to push this to create a pocket. All right, so do you see how we've got this here now? Now you're probably thinking that card is gonna fall right through there, but it's not. So let me show you what I did. Let's push this off to the side for just a moment. And then I'm gonna put that vellum wrap here. Now let's go ahead and start working on the card itself that's gonna go inside. This has been tweaked just a little bit on the cutting dimensions. Um, I believe this is, I wanna look, I, I know I wrote it down. It is five and a half by eight and a quarter. So you're scoring it at four and an eighth. And the reason we had to make it a little bit smaller is it's gotta fit down inside that sleeve. So I've already done that. I pre-scored it before you joined me. I'm just gonna go ahead and crease that up. I wanted to do the front on this very, very simple because I know it's gonna be through the vellum. This is from the Plaid Tidings Designer Series Paper Stack and double-sided giving you lots of choices. One of the reasons I love that Designer Series Paper is there are literally all types of patterns for all year round. This is gonna be my wrong side tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my adhesive here. Again, using that silicone craft sheet because I'm a little zealous sometimes and I always get it on my table. And we'll add that to the back side. And then this is going to go here on the front of that card base. I left a small margin of the white cardstock all the way around. All right, so we're gonna do a little stamping right on that designer series paper. And you may not have often tried that, but I loved it for this card because it's going to peek through and we're gonna strategically place some of these items. So I've got a small grid sheet I'm gonna place here underneath and I am going to start with my Memento Black ink pad and my Real Red ink pad. I'm gonna start with the greeting first and I'm gonna use Real Red for that. And I pulled out the greeting from a different stamp set. This is from a stamp set, the Happy Birthday. Hold on one second, I gotta find it. Like I said, I'm a little fish out of water today. A Grand Kid. You know, I don't have grandchildren yet. My daughter just got married in February. But when I took a good look at this, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this because there's some other great greetings in here that can be used for other cards. Don't be afraid to borrow, especially greetings and sentiments from one stamp set to another. That's why you bought them. Use up your investment. 
So I'm inking that up in the real red, and I'm gonna stamp that down here on the lower left side. I'm not gonna to come too far down. Again, this is strategically placed. Now I wanna give you a little tip. I like to use the Stampin' Scrub or the Stampin' Chamois to clean my stamps. You should never put your stamps away dirty. But there's a lot of color still on here, and I find that if I go and I clean it right away, and I've done a lot of marathon stamping, that thing gets really muddy and dirty, and I have to go rinse it out more often than I'd like. And quite frankly, when I'm paper crafting, I don't like to get up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp off that excess ink on my scratch paper, which virtually makes this almost clean. So that when you go to clean it, not only is it going to keep that cleaner for you, less trips away from the craft table. That's what I say. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push this off to the side. I'd like to close them here in the studio. And then I'm going to open up the Memento Black ink pad. You're going to see these little strands here are actually for a balloon that I'm going to be using. And this is from the stamp set called So Much Happy. Again, I'm pulling out things from my artillery to mix and match. And if you don't have that, that's fine. You have one stamp set. That's terrific. Use the images that are in there to help create a pattern background right on your designer series paper. This technique is fantastic for those simple designer series papers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up as well. And I am going to stamp that all over about here. And I'm going to do three of these. Now, I did turn it a couple times, and I found that these were pretty much kind of the same curly kind of pattern. So it really didn't make a whole lot of difference. But just for grins and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. And there we go. Oh, look at that. Guess who's getting this card? I always say when I make a mistake, it's going to my mom. <laughs> that figures when I'm live with you, right? All right. So let me show you the next step here. I've got a piece of scrap whisper white, I'm sorry, this is real red cardstock, and I'm using these, a fantastic balloon bouquet punch. I love this because it's great for every type of card in celebration. There's a large and a small balloon on here. It punches them both at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place this down inside, give that a good squeeze, and that's going to give you both of your balloons at the same time. Now, I did punch two others before you joined me. One is from Mango Melody and one is from White. And we're going to be doing some stamping on those as well. I'm going to push those off out of the way. And I've got my red one. Another thing you might want to try to do is add a little bit of texture to your stamped images with a stamp in the stamp set. Or in this case, as I've done here, I've actually used one of the patterns that are here. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use the same color ink as you have cardstock. But a lot of paper crafters don't always have the same color ink that matches the papers that they own. So let me show you what I like to use. I love to use Versamark. This is a watermark stamp pad, and it actually is going to leave tone on tone. So I chose the stars for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up, and I'm going to stamp that here. Well, I'm upset about that boo-boo on that card, but you know what? That's okay, right? I'm sure I'm not the only person who's made a mistake. As that Versamark ink is going to dry, this is going to become a little bit more predominant. And I love it because it's very, very subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this off right away. One thing about Versamark ink, you don't want to leave it on your stamps without cleaning it. It's a very tacky ink. This is also the same type of ink that you'll use when you do heat embossing. So let me set that off to the side. And before you join me, I went ahead and I did something similar with the mango. And the white one, I just used crumb cake ink, which matches that designer series paper with just another pattern. That's one of the things about the Stampin' Up! products I love is the color coordination. So we've got our three balloons. Let me set those off to the side for right now. And let me grab my dimensionals. And here's that ugly balloon string. <laughs> okay, let's flip these upside down. And I am going to strategically place the dimensionals on here because I want to kind of overlay these balloons. So I want to make sure that the dimensionals are not going to create an elevation difference. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first one, and I'm going to put it up here near the top of my large balloon, and I'm going to use that one right up here. Now, the great thing about this is you can manipulate this as high or as low as you want on that string. Make sure you stay within the circumference of your card. I'm going to go ahead and I'll mount that one here, because remember, if it doesn't stay within here, you're not going to get it inside that vellum wrap. My next one is going to be this one, the mango, and I'm attaching that here to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and use my take your pick tool for this. That putty tip is fantastic for those small pieces of paper or sequence. And I added the paper piercing tool attachment to this because that helps me get those off nice and easy. And then let's see, can we hide some of that ugliness? Oh, I say we can. Look at that. Talk about strategic. There we go. 
great way to fix those mistakes, right? And let's go ahead and let's take one more. This is the white one, and I'm going to add that near the bottom, again, because we're going to do some overlapping. And then this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put here. And I'm going to tip that a little bit so it stays on that string. And we're going to go ahead and we'll attach that there. Okay, so I almost salvaged it, right? All right, let's talk about how we're going to decorate this. So I'm going to bring in a piece of thick whisper white cardstock here. This is a great indication to you that I'm going to be doing some stamping and some coloring because I love the thick whisper white. Back to my Memento black ink pad and here is what I want to feature. Look at this adorable owl stamp. Let me go ahead and ink this up so you can get a better look at this. This product is in the holiday catalog. And quite often we think, I shouldn't say holiday catalog, they changed the name and I'm kind of regressing. It's the mini catalog. The mini catalog is consumed with a lot of holiday products. So you've got fall, Halloween, Christmas, but there are also all occasion stamp sets in there as well. The one thing I loved about the stamp set is the brilliance of the dies that you can purchase as a bundle. So let me show you this really quick. This is called Have a Hoot. And I'm a huge fan of stamp sets that are not the old, same old, same old, which this one isn't. The owl is very different, and I thought the expressions and the little faces were precious, and I loved the greetings. But here is the beauty of this. If you're like me and you love coordinating dies, you are also going to love these. The peak a hoot. There are three frames here, and I want to show you this really quick. These are actually connected, look. But you know what? They die cut as three separate frames which is the same thing on some of these images, which makes this a perfect design process. So let me show you here. Do you see the owl that has a spider here? Wait till you see my other cards. Do you see this owl with the moon? This one with the mistletoe? You're not gonna believe what you can do with these. So I wanna showcase that because I want you to know that this is not just for the holidays that you may see these for. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a very quick 411 on the coloring that I did for mine. I've got one already finished for you. The owl itself really is the largest area on here and it's still very small to be quite honest. Any coloring medium is fantastic. So you can use watercolor pencils, dye-based dye markers, whatever makes you happy. I love the alcohol-based stamp and blends markers because it provides flawless coverage. When you repeat an area, you don't get light and dark spots. The alcohol evaporates, which gives you very consistent color, makes you look really fancy. I like to use the lightest color first. That's just a personal preference. They are dual tipped. I'm gonna use the smaller tip for this because obviously this is just a really small area. I am not gonna color the whole thing because I have one already finished. But a lot of people are new to alcohol-based markers or even the Stampin' Blends, and they get a little intimidated by this and they're like, well, I'm not sure how to use them. So I'm just gonna give you a quick lesson. Let that first layer of color a few seconds to evaporate because once that evaporates, you're going to be able to lay some definition with the darker shade. Now they come in the combination, so you get them both. So this is the darker one now. You see those little lines that the artist put inside here? Those are your cheat marks. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a few more. So I'm going to add a little bit of feather texture here. And that's going to give us a little bit of depth to that image. And of course, you can add more or less depending on what you like. The secret is to let this evaporate again for a few seconds, but to get rid of those harsh lines and make this look more blended, you go back to the lightest shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do little circular marks this time because this is a really tiny area. Larger areas, I go ahead and I pull from the dark to the light. Now it might not look like much because remember that alcohol base is actually evaporating. And then once it's done evaporating, you're gonna get more of its true tone. All right, so that's just a quick lesson on the alcohol-based markers. The next thing that I did was I took the two-inch circle punch, which is here. Let me zoom you out just a little bit. I want to make sure you can see. And I punched this out. So I just like to use my punch upside down so I can see where I'm going. I do my very best to make sure it's centered, and I've got my image. And as I told you, I already have one that's finished. And let me show you that one. And here it is. Isn't this cute? Again, the color coordination is fantastic. So I was able to use the same Stampin' Blends color markers on the cardstock that I punched for those balloons. So everything's going to match. This is Granny Apple Green down here. Then I used the two and one quarter inch circle punch and I made myself a layer for this circle. So let me grab my silicone craft sheet once again and remove those. 
I cut these fingernails really short because I cut up, I broke them every single one in a box when I'm unpacking. And I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side here. And we're gonna attach these two circles together. So here we go. And I'm gonna leave a small margin all the way around. Now this piece, this focal piece is gonna become very, very important in just a second. All right, so we've got our little image here. We've got our vellum wrap. I wanted to create a notch in this. So I'll tell you what I did is I used another punch to help me do that. Now, of course, you can use the layering circles dies if you have those, but I've got the one and a half inch punch here, and I'm gonna use that upside down again. I want to make sure that my adhered end, my raw end is to the back, so it's not gonna be too obtrusive. I'm gonna put it in just part way, just to make a notch. I'm looking to see if it's visually centered the very best that I can, and we'll go ahead and we'll punch that out. You should see the floor. I kind of just threw everything on there. All right, making sure that that raw end is to the back, which it is. We are going to take this card and it's gonna go in the sleeve, but let's go ahead and finish the inside while we're together. I'm gonna go back to that real red ink pad and I'm gonna add a sentiment from another stamp set. Again, mix and match from what you have. And this is the beauty of your investments. Once you buy them, they're in your artillery. Pattern play. I overlooked this in the annual catalog. I can't even tell you how many times and I have fallen in love with it. This is where I've got those two patterns from some of the balloons. But I loved this, cue the confetti because I thought it was really cute and whimsical to go through with that little owl image. And remember, I've got six more cards to share with you. And there is my greeting here. Again, I'm gonna stamp off that excess ink. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of pizzazz to this because I thought those borders were a little bit boring. So again, that color coordination is going to come into play. That is the Mango Melody that matches one of those balloons. And then I'm gonna add some confetti here and here. And let's do a little bit down here in the corner. That's a little bit more interesting, isn't it? I don't know a single kid who would receive this card or even a, an adult who wouldn't like this. All right, so we're gonna close this up. And then this now is going to slide down in here. I love the fact that I've got a full size card, not just a card quarter, just a quarter sheet, and it fits inside perfectly. Now, for those of you who think it's gonna fall out, it doesn't. Great, great invitation idea. Now, let me show you what else I did with this image. Strategically, I decided to place this. So we're gonna flip that over. I'm taking three dimensionals because I'm very cognizant that my cards go through the postage meter at the post office, and they do a real number on your cards. They can come out all lopsided. And after you do all that work, there's nothing worse than when they get there. They don't look like when you made them. I am going to cover this. So I've got a greeting when the card is pulled out. So here we go. We've got our vellum wrap around the outside of our card. And then when the card is revealed, you can see the greeting on the inside. And then of course the greeting on the inside. Isn't this fun? Oh my gosh, I'm loving the stamp set. I love the fact that the dies can separately die cut some of the pieces to make these really more versatile. Now, let me show you the other cards that I promised you. Let me put this aside and let me grab those here. Bear with me. Everything is in a different place in this house, so I'm learning where things are. Now, the six cards I'm going to share with you are all part of my monthly online card making class. I am going to include for you a tutorial. Believe it or not, this tutorial, you ready? It's 14 pages long. Look at, and you're even gonna get a template for this card that I just showed you. You're gonna get multiple pictures for each card, step-by-step -step instructions, and a video. It's a full length video where you will stamp each of the six cards I'm gonna share with you right along with me from the comfort of your home. This allows you to make them at your own pace. You don't have to rush. You don't have to worry that you're gonna be slower or faster than someone else. Here is the second card. These are all using that fantastic Have a Hoot bundle, which was that stamp set and those coordinating dies. So we've got Halloween and the Christmas. Remember we talked about that owl that originally had that spider? Look what I did. I put a small heart over the top of that. So I made this a completely different card. In addition to the Have the Hoot stamp set, I brought in the Festive Corners stamp set, which is what gave me this. Every single one of my cards is lined on the inside and they are all stamped. Look how cute they are. So we've got those three. The next three, here's this one. Okay, this stamp set is really, really versatile. Do you remember this one had the holly on it? Well, I should say the mistletoe. Because the dies die cut these two pieces separately, you don't have to use it for that. So I made mine into an anniversary card. 
That same plaid designer series paper, do you see it? It's on every single card. And again, stamped on the inside. And then here is the fifth card. Look at that. I can't believe you're another year older. So I use some fun black glimmer paper, that same designer series paper stack. It's very, very versatile. I made a real fun birthday card and again, stamped the inside. So that's five. And the sixth one is this. Here we go, Christmas. Completely offset for a totally different style. Again, same package of paper. Add a little bit of ribbon, a little bit of rhinestones. So simple, the coloring, because the images are small. Now, let me turn the camera around and let me explain to you how you can get the PDF tutorial and the video to make all six of these cards. Okay, sorry if that was a little bit bumpy. I This is the first time I've even done a video or a live in this new studio, so things are quite different than they were before. All right, I would love to have you join me for the August card making class. Now it's an online class, so let me tell you how it works. If you place a $50 product order using an exclusive card making class host code, it's a special code, you are automatically gonna get the video and the 14 page tutorial sent to you in an email. Now it's very, very important that you understand that if your order is $150 or more that you should not use the host code. And the reason is, is that Stampin' Up! is going to give you free product rewards because of the size of your order. But if you are intending that order to be for the card making class, you'll need to contact me. And it's an easy way to do it. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on contact me in the menu and say, hey Lisa, I placed an order, this order number, and it's intended for the card making class. Send me the tutorial and the video. And once you tell me that, we're all set. I'll get that off to you. Now, it's in exchange for a $50 product order. That's the minimum. And I would love to share it with you. Now, for those of you that do not want to place an order and you still want the 14-page tutorial, you can get just the tutorial. It does not include the video. The video is exclusive to the card making class. The video can be found on my website as well under classes, PDF tutorials. And I have a huge library there of all different types of tutorials for you to purchase. And they're all reasonably priced. I charge a dollar a page for all the pictures, all the cutting dimensions, the supplies. It is quite ex extensive. I think you'll be very, very pleased. Now, there's only a four day ordering period for the August card making class. So it starts today, which is Wednesday, August 12th. And it will go through Saturday, which is August 15th. After that, it's not available anymore. I have a new card making class that comes every single month. So head over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on classes, and you'll also see the card class information there for you as well. We'll give you an outline of everything we've talked about if you prefer to read it. Please remember, you have to use the exclusive card making class host code. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing that your order was intended for this class, unless your order is $150 or more. And then of course, contact me. That's really, really important. Now, a couple things before we go that I wanna let you know, I've got notes posted there. It's in a new spot. So I'm looking off camera just a little bit. For those of you that are interested, I do offer exclusive and generous ordering rewards. That's outside of the card class. Those are over on my website as well under rewards. It's right next to the shop button over on my blog or my website. I offer catalogs, so if you're interested in receiving that brand new mini catalog, or of course the annual catalog, I send them together. You can request them over at lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. I would love to send those to you. Also, while you're there, you can sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. I provide a tutorial in that newsletter that's not shared on any other platform, and I'd sure love to have you join us. I think that's it, but make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel before you go, because I'm going to be back live with you again. I'm looking at the date. Yep, it's Monday, August 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I've got a fantastic fun fold for you. So I hope that you'll be back and join me then. Megan, thanks for all your hard work tonight, and I look forward to seeing you guys really soon. Have a great evening.